Hi, my name is Al Meredith and I pastor the Wedgwood Baptist Church here in Southwest Fort Worth, Texas. On the evening of September 15th, 1999, uh, deeply disturbed and uh, at least temporarily uh, confused and perhaps even insane man by the name of Larry Ashbrook, armed with 200 rounds of ammunition and a pipe bomb, entered our sanctuary where I'm standing here today. Uh, angry about we know not what, deciding he was going to lash out at God and at his church, he began opening fire on our congregation. In the vestibule, to my right, uh, he ran across, uh, first of all, one of our janitors and uh, shot and wounded him, and then opened fire on a group of people waiting out there for choir practice to begin. One of them, our children's choir director, Sidney Browning, was killed instantly. He made his way down the hallway and one of our uh, voluntary youth workers who was here in the back of the sanctuary where a, a concert was going on uh, came out to see what was going on and he shot Sean Brown, a seminary student, a young man preparing for youth ministry and killed him just outside these doors in the hallway. He proceeded inside and began to open a fire on more than 400 young people, teenagers, who were celebrating that morning see at the pool rally and just praising the Lord and singing and sharing testimonies of what God had done at their schools. Several churches were gathered together. Joey Ennis, a 14-year-old freshman from Brewer High School, was shot down and killed. Christy Beckel, sitting about halfway up, another 14-year-old freshman from a Christian school here in town. Uh, a bullet found her and she eventually died from complications that night. Cassie Griffin, who had invited 10, 20 of her friends to come, and many of them were here on the second row of the sanctuary, was shot down and killed. Justin Ray, who was a 17-year-old senior uh, here in uh, Fort Worth, was videotaping what he thought was a skit, and uh, one of the bullets finally found him and, and took his life. These were people who were the brightest and the best. One of them was Kim Jones. She was sitting here in this pew in the back row, and she was one of the first to receive the bullet that took her martyred soul to heaven. This story is about Kim and about her impact on people's lives and about her testimony of faith in Jesus Christ. Good morning. I have to tell you that I'm a big fan of backpacking. I was sharing with the first service that I have had the opportunity to go on numerous backpacking adventures. And let me just tell you that the first thing that you learn about backpacking is you don't want a lot of stuff with you because you are carrying this thing on your back for a long time. And so you try to pack as lightly as possible. Had the opportunity to work in the Netherlands this past semester, many of you know. And how I lived there was people from the church would invite me into their house. So I would spend a month here, a week here, three weeks here, a week here, two weeks here, and I was constantly living out of my backpack. Now, for all of you that know, have been traveling a lot, you know living out of a suitcase, it's not that fun. But you know it's okay because someday you're going home. And you're not going to stay there, you're going to someday go home. When I first had Kim, I just remember thinking, Lord, this is such a gift from you. It's such a miracle. I just want to be the best kind of mother that I can be. We want to be the best kind of parents that we can be. And we dedicated her to him. And my whole prayer was, Lord, all that matters is that she comes to know you and live a life for you. When, I remember when she first went to college, she said, okay, mom, I'm just going to be famous and rich. And then by the second year, she said, you know, I've realized now that it's not so much what our accomplishments, is she says, it's how we affect people. About after her sophomore year, and about, what, about the time when I came back to TCU and we were living together, she uh, had broken down one night. She just walked into uh, the church up here and got down on our knees and and just asked the Lord, if he was out there, to uh, change her. This one day we were talking and she was like, you know, just this week I just decided I want to live for him. And she had accepted Jesus as her savior and she just wasn't the same after that. 
by the third year when she had accepted the Lord, she said, Mom, all that matters is sharing Jesus with people and letting them know that they can have a relationship. She was really dedicated to talking to the Lord and talking to Him every day. And that's where her strength came from. It was just amazing. She spent hours just studying His Word and she made it a priority and time in prayer. And I guess that was the thing that we saw. That's what it takes. If we want to know Him, we've got to spend time with Him. And I think for Kim, it was because she so loved the Lord and she really truly understood how much He loved her that she just wanted to be with Him. And she wanted just to read His Word, not so much for a study time, but just to be with Him. And she would pray, not so much to get all these great answers, but just to be with Him. And so she really learned how to be still and know that He is God, and just to sit at His feet and, and take Him in. All of her friends, you know, really didn't understand, you know, what was going on. Those same girls were some of the ones that she really affected the most. When she died, people were like, wow, she really did change. went to start this Delta Gamma Bible study, uh, she basically came and she's like, okay, Christy, let's start this because I want all the Delta Gammas to know about Jesus. And my initial thought was, okay, maybe we shouldn't pray all. Why don't we just pray some? You know, just, I wasn't as optimistic as Kim was. And so I was like, okay, we'll pray for every single DG to know Jesus. And she was like, and we may not be the ones who share with them, but we will pray that every single one will hear. That semester, we started the Bible study. There was five of us. After everything that happened, after Kim's death in the Delta Gamma house, we all met with all the DGs, Christians and non, and had a time for everybody to kind of talk about it. And girl after girl stood up and said, if you knew Kim, you knew that she loved the Lord. And what it means to love the Lord is to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. And so alumni DGs, active DGs heard that day what it meant to be a Christian, and it was just neat that the very thing we had prayed for so many semesters earlier, that every DG would hear, I think God answered her prayer request, even not only through her life, but through her death. Every summer there's a, there's like a rock group, it's like the youth group for the American kids on the camp over there, and uh, it's called Rely on Christ the King Rock. The kids that she had been a youth director for knew so much of the Bible. And so she was having to study just to keep up with them. And she said, I think that I need to go to seminary so that I'll be better prepared for whatever God wants me to do. But she says, but what am I going to do this summer? And I said, well, why don't you just come to Saudi Arabia? You worked here last year as the youth director under Hayden. So we just feel so blessed that God worked out the details for her to be able to be with us this summer, be the youth director, serve there, because she did think of it as her home. And it was put continuity to the program because she had worked there the year before. So this way, the kids that had accepted Jesus, she was able to disciple. The youth group was asked to give a church service or a fellowship service, and they have responsibility for all of it. And there's a lot of music and a lot of skits, and then the, uh, the leader gives a uh, short talk. The last time that we saw each other, and we live overseas and for eight years, I've been flying back and forth, and we've had so many goodbyes that it's not that you ever get used to it, but you just think, oh, I'll see you again. And the last time that we hugged, and said goodbye, we both cried, and that was so unusual. So I think that God was then beginning to prepare me that this was maybe a last goodbye. Kim had bought me this book for my birthday. She gave it to me. This is on the 7th, and she came home and she goes, Christy, I love this book, but I'm telling you right now, the last chapter, the last paragraph, is the very best. So if you don't like anything else in the book, skip to the end. After all of this, I sat and, like the day after, I sat and read 
the very last chapter to see what it was that she was so excited about. And all it was is about going home to be with Jesus. And I thought, Kim lived completely here, completely dedicated to a daily life to share who Jesus is. But her heart was always in heaven. And she just couldn't wait to be with Jesus. The Tuesday night before the event at Wedgwood, she led our first Bible study. She read how we're fearfully and wonderfully made, and then she continued on and how it says that the Lord knows the numbers of our days. And at that time, we didn't think anything, but she sat there and she and said, girls, what I want you to see from this is that God wants all of you every day. Only He knows what your future holds, but He wants all of you completely every single day. And that is what we are called as Christians to do. We are set apart, not necessarily for big events, we are set apart to live each day for Him and completely for Him. And so she shared that with our group. And it was one of those things at the time, we were like, oh wow, it's challenging. But then after this, we could sit back and look and go, okay God, Kim could share this because that's how Kim lived. Every single day, completely, 100% sold out to you. And, and we look back now, as it was such a, a challenge to us at the time, but even more so now to go, okay, God, we want that intense relationship that she had with you. And the only thing that she did different than any of us was that she took your word seriously. And she spent time with you on a daily basis and it changed her life radically. So the next morning we woke up, we turned on the news, and then we saw on the TV, tragedy in Fort Worth, Wedgwood Baptist, and then of course our hearts just began to sink, and then it said youth meeting and so I knew Kim would have been at that youth meeting and it was like just a kind of a sharp pain went into my heart that I just knew that somehow she had been involved and so we immediately got on the phone and we tried to reach my son or someone that might know some, something and we did get one of Tim's roommates and I said you know there's been a shooting at Fort, you know in Fort Worth and at Kim's church and he said he says yes ma'am I know I says well where's Tim where's Tim he says well he's not here I said is he at a hospital and he said um I just don't know I said well has Kim been one of those that were shot and he said ma'am I just never had to do anything I, I've never experienced anything like this before and he was just really struggling bless his heart and I said if you know something you've got to tell us we've got to know and he said I just know that it was worse than that 15 minutes later they called back and said they were sending somebody over so I had to identify the body by this point it was about five o'clock in the morning and it's horrible like when I first when I first got to identify the body, it was, it was pretty crazy because I saw her, I sat there and I looked at her and it wasn't her because she's always smiling and that was just my shocked brain thinking. But later looking at her lifeless body, I knew that she was somewhere better. I wasn't there that night. So I walked in around 10 o'clock for my class and my roommate was there and look at the TV and my church is on the television set. People started calling me, like relatives and my mom and family and one thing that I was saying to them was, I'm scared to know who it is, who they are. Because I, I knew, I knew that, that she was one of them. Wednesday, I came home and all this turned on the TV and saw all this stuff at my church happening. And my immediate thought was of Kim, because Kim was one of those that she didn't miss church. And if there was any praise and worship going on, she wouldn't miss that. And so 
I didn't think anything had happened to her, but I immediately knew that Kim was there. As the night went on and we found out, and it just didn't feel real. And I know for myself and a lot of us, we just questioned God. What a light. And, and why this one? Out of all the people, why someone who is such a godly example of who you are? Um, but then I had to stop and, and just say, but I don't know what Kim's prayers have been, whether they've been prayers of God, use me however you want. And that maybe that's how God chose to answer that prayer request. But yet her light continues to glow because it wasn't Kim. It was Jesus Christ living through her. If somebody had said, I need a volunteer to go to heaven, she would have said, I will go. I am ready. And even though I'm sad and I miss her, I know that she was ready. And the person that um, was lying next to her when she was shot um, on the floor of the church said that she wasn't praying that for safety, that she was praising God. And her hands were folded like this, praising Him for what He was going to do and the awesome God that He was. And then the bullet struck her and instantly the angels took her home. After Kim had become a Christian and she was, would come down and hang out in my room and one night, it was probably about two months later, I can't remember the exact time, it was right in those first few months of her becoming a Christian, she knocked on my door and she was like, can I hang out with you tonight? And I was like, normally I'm like, yeah, come in and we would talk about God. And, but this particular night I had a lot of schoolwork to do and I was actually writing a paper. And so I was like, Kim, you can hang out with me, you can watch TV, you can sit on my couch, but I can't talk, I've got to do my paper. And she was like, Chrissy, that's fine. I just, I don't want to hang out in my room by myself, so just give me a book, and I want a book about a Christian who loves Jesus completely. And so I looked on my shelf, and um, I decided the one about Jim Elliott through Gates of Splendor would be a wonderful book for her to read, because anybody who reads it just walks away completely challenged. So I gave it to her, and she read it. She laid on my couch and read it while I was on the floor doing my paper, and hours later, it was probably like two or three in the morning, it was it was early. I had finally finished and I looked up and Kim was bawling and so I thought, oh no, <laughs> I've upset her. We're going to be up for five more hours discussing why I'd upset her. I didn't know and I was like, Kim, what's wrong? And she said, Christy, I know what I want to do with my life and my immediate response was, you want to be a missionary? That is great. Yay, we can already plan now what country you're going to go to and dream all these big dreams and she just looked at me and, and was crying and to know Kim she didn't cry very much but she was just crying and she said Christy no I don't I don't know if I'm gonna be a missionary or not but I want to be the kind of person who would give my life for Christ but you know it's okay because someday you're going home and so while that whole time I was six months living out of my backpack I kept focusing on someday I will be in my house. And sure enough, I arrived in Saudi Arabia after a horrendous plane ride at four o'clock in the morning. And the first thing I did, I went to my room and I unpacked my backpack. And I put my stuff in the drawers and I slept in my own bed. And man, it was good to be home. You guys, everyone in here, we're basically a bunch of backpackers. We are all just travelers, we are all just on a journey, and we are heading for our home. But I think sometimes we lose sight of that, and sometimes we start to focus so much on this world and we forget that God has said in his Bible that this world is not our home. We are strangers and aliens in this place. This isn't it. And someday this body of mine is going to die, it's going to pass away. The most amazing thing we are forced to live out the rest of eternity based on the decisions that you are making today 